What's up, navigation traders? Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Today's Friday, May 12th. This is the weekly video update. Uh, don't forget to join us Monday morning. We will have our uh, trade of the week. We'll have our weekly trivia contest. We've given away two free courses so far for people who have uh, gave me the right answers on the, the trivia contest. So uh, make sure you tune in. It's, it's uh, starting to become a lot of fun. So. Let's jump into the trades for this week. Uh, starting with, first trade was we opened a strangle in oil. And this was in the oil futures contract. And so, you know, with I mentioned here with, with low IV in most of the symbols across the board, uh, you know, even though it wasn't above our 50 level, it was kind of kind of the highest thing out there. And so I love being involved in, in oil. It's one of my favorite vehicles to trade. So I wanted to get uh, wanted to get a position on in oil and implied volatility has just been so low for so long in oil that we really haven't had an opportunity. I mean, look at this, look how just low this was forever. Finally got a little spike and eh, not quite reaching 50, but, but good enough to uh, get some decent premium to sell. So put on a strangle in oil. So if we take a look here at our at our graph, so still pretty centered, up a little bit, not enough to take off. So we'll continue to monitor that. Next position, our next trade we did was uh, well on May 9th. There was there was no alerts that day. Uh, the next day we did a closing trade and we took off a strangle in FXE. So this was a position that had been adjusted and rolled from the previous May cycle. Uh, stayed mechanical and it paid off once again. So um, we, we took off, actually, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because we took off another, we did another closing trade on our other strangle in FXE and we made over 45% of max profit in just 10 days in the FXE. Now, a lot of that uh, implied volatility contraction in the markets overall and specifically in FXE was of course due to the uh, elections in France. And after that news was out, you can see a couple weeks ago, we got that downturn and then it's, it's, it's crept down below as that news became more and more certain. And that's how that works. So uh, nice trades in FXE, booked, a lot, booked some nice profits in there this week. Uh, the next trade we did was a closing trade in SPY. So we'd been holding this iron condor for several weeks in SPY and it was just hanging out right near our upside break even. You know, I had this big move up and then on this day right here, we had enough down move to get out of the trade with only eight days to expiration. We were just looking to get out for some profit uh, and looks like that was a good move because it, it has moved up since then. So we would have been kind of right around near our break even uh, had we not taken that off. So didn't get the normal 40% that we're looking for, but we still got 35% of max profit on that, which is pretty good uh, considering how, you know, how long we were in it. And, you know, if, if price would have moved up, it could have very, very easily turned into a loser. So made out good on that one. And then IWM. So several weeks ago, we also had an iron condor in IWM. The put side, we already closed a couple weeks ago because the price of IWM moved up, as you can see there. And so once that broke our break even point, we took off the put side because we basically didn't have any premium left in those. So we got out of those for basically max profit. And we we're still holding the tested side or the call side. And IWM reversed and moved back down for us, which was excellent. And so we were actually able to take off the call side and on the, on the entire iron condor as a, as a full trade, made over 55% of max profit on the entire spread. So great, great trade there. Again, staying mechanical and just kind of playing the game, let, letting those probabilities play out. Uh, it, it paid off for us again. I already mentioned that one in FXE. And then the last trade that we made today was in Apple. So we put on an iron condor in Apple. Uh, I don't do a ton in stocks. I like to stick to the indexes. I like to stick to the futures. 
but uh, but in this case Apple looks like it's giving us an opportunity and when we put this on implied volatility rank was uh, just above 50 it's right at 49 now hasn't changed much but uh, but that that's you know obviously what we're looking for that IV rank or that IV percentile to get that 50 or above to put these trades on and the fact that they just announced earnings 10 days ago we don't have to worry about earnings announcements. Uh, they, they announced their dividend yesterday, so we don't have to worry about any short calls and, and, and owing on the dividend. So uh, so we're in good shape there. So so we put on an iron condor in Apple, and we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. Now, a couple, couple key things. If you look at the trade tab for Apple, and we did this with 35 days to expiration, which is the right time frame that we want. But the one thing, and, and I wish they had you know, single point wide strikes, but unfortunately some option chains and some symbols just don't. So for example, in Apple, these strikes are five points wide. So you're either gonna choose as your short strike the 17 delta or the 33 delta. And then on the put side, either the 24 or the 45. So on the put side, I went with the 24 delta, which is pretty close to what we like to, to sell at, which is typically around that 20 delta. On the call side, I ended up bumping it up to the 33. So this is a bit more of a, a bit of a tighter, uh, tighter iron condor than we traditionally like to put on. But if we, if we move our dashes to break even and make sure we got that 617. So you can see about a, our initial probability of profit, um, at ex for, for expiration is almost 52%. We like to see that closer to around 60%, but the benefit that you do get on the flip side, you know, there's always a risk and reward or you know, a give and a take to every, every scenario. Uh, the benefit is we got more credit. So we collected more credit, but our uh, short strikes are just a little bit tighter, a little bit closer to price than we normally put them on, but that's okay. Uh, looking for just Apple to stay in a range. It's obviously been on just an explosive move from way back here, back in November. That's what really when it started. Uh, and and it's, already, it's at almost $156. So hopefully we, it can kind of settle down, stay range bound a little bit, and we'll collect that theta in Apple. So let's take a look at some of the other positions. We've got a iron condor on in corn. And I actually tried to get filled on this. Uh, actually, I still have a working order, um, but uh, I wouldn't mind you know, holding it over the weekend. Hopefully there's not any type of explosion one way or another in corn. And if so, we'll collect some more theta and probably get out of that first thing Monday morning, uh, unless I get filled here uh, in the next couple hours. And if I do, I'll send that alert out. In wheat, we've got an iron condor as well. So we put this on when wheat was up here and it's had a pretty significant move down. Nothing to do, no, no reason to adjust yet. Let's just hold tight. Uh, if we get a move back up into this range, we'll be able to bank that profit. If it keeps going down, we'll make the necessary adjustment, but, uh, but nothing to do in wheat yet. EFA, we've still got this adjusted strangle, just looking for a little bit of a, a down move and some more time to pass. Uh, to get out of our EFA position. EWW, we're close to getting out of this one. Uh, not quite enough. I want I want 50% of max profit on this one. Uh, so look to probably close that early Monday as well, assuming we get some decent theta decay over the weekend. And GLD, so this is, uh, GLD has just been a little bit of a thorn. It just, it won't move back up. It just continues to stay down and we've got only, what do we have here? Just six or seven days to expiration, I believe. Yeah, seven days to expiration. So I couldn't get filled on, I, I sent out an alert last week on this. I couldn't get filled on the call spread to take that off we, like we like to. Uh, so I wasn't gonna chase price. I wasn't gonna pay up to do so. Uh, so I just so we're leaving the whole thing on. If we do get a, a, a move back down, I'm just gonna take the whole thing off. And either way, even, even if we, if we get a down move or an up move, uh, first thing Monday, I'll be taking this off. So hopefully hopefully gold goes up a little bit over the weekend, but if you're nervous about it going down more, just take it off. 
Uh, you know, no need to stress out of the, over the weekend or anything. Um, I'm, a, I'm going to, I like to hold these until, you know, the last week of expiration. So I'll take it off Monday um, and, and hopefully we get a move in our direction. But we could definitely move down and, and that'll, that'll cost us a little bit. So you need to make, make sure you take ownership of your positions. Uh, I'm, I'm showing you what I do and that's kind of the value of these alerts. But, but make sure you're doing what's comfortable for you. IWM, I mentioned Lulu. So Lululemon, still pretty centered. Uh, implied volatility has jumped up on us since then. And uh, previously, I, I thought we were going to be within the uh, cycle before they announced earnings. And so some of, these, some of these companies will change that around, but it looks like they're announcing earnings on June 7th now. So we've got a little bit less than a month uh, we will be getting out of this before the earnings announcement. Uh, unfortunately, that theta decay is, is probably not going to help us as much because of the uh, implied, vol implied volatility getting bid up before earnings. But uh, still, you know, still plenty of time to to bank a profit on this one. So we'll stick with it and uh, hopefully it stays in a range leading up to its earnings announcement. But just again, be aware we will get out before the earnings. QQQ, so this is one that moved up on us. We took off the put side and looking for a little bit of a move down. Uh, I'll look to get out of this one on Monday or early next week as well. Obviously gonna take a loss on this trade. Now it's not the full $600 loss that we're at right now because it's, remember, it's not including the, the profit that we made on the put side that we took off. So it will be a loser unless we have a big move down, uh, but uh, that's that's part of the game. You got to got to take the losers. We've taken a lot of winners off. Uh, every one of them can't be a winner, but uh, but this one looks like it will be. XOP. So uh, XOP jumped up above uh, the fifty percent level on the IV percentile. So we put on a strangle in XOP. Still very centered. Nothing to do there yet. And lastly, XRT. So this was an adjusted position. It has come back down and centered very nicely for us. I'd like to get a little bit more decay, a little bit more profit in there before we take that trade off in XRT. And the, uh, the implied volatility is hanging out right around this 50 level. So we may look to uh, take that off uh, sometime next week and maybe put on a new centered uh, position to kind of widen out those break evens. But I wanna get a little bit more out of this before we do so. So I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to join us Monday morning, 825 a.m. Central, right before the markets open for our trade of the week, our trivia contest, and just a brief overview of the market for the trading week ahead. Have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you later.